நீங்கள் பார்த்து கொண்டிருப்பது அமெரிக்கா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தமிழ் சேனல் ஃப்ரம் அமெரிக்கா அமெரிக்கா நேயர்களுக்கு எங்கள் அன்பு வணக்கம் அமெரிக்க நேயர்களுக்கு என் இனிய வாழ்த்துக்கள் அமெரிக்கா தொலைக்காட்சிக்கு நன்றி வணக்கம் நீங்கள் பார்த்துட்டு இருக்கிறது அமெரிக்கா தொலைக்காட்சி அமெரிக்காவால் தமிழர்களுக்காகவே தொடங்கப்பட்ட ஒரு தொலைக்காட்சி நீங்கள் பார்த்து கொண்டிருப்பது அமெரிக்கா சேனல் Thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Um, thanks, everyone, uh, for joining this college readiness uh, sessions. So today, we are going to cover about CSS profile. And uh, before we get started, let me give a brief overview of what we do uh, in America. Um, so uh, America has been there since 2007. Uh, we have been conducting a lot of informative sessions other than entertaining the people and uh, most of them we do is uh, college readiness and a uh, lot of immigration updates and uh, financial freedom and we talk about uh, you know many things that that is needed to live in this country you know and uh, so my name is mahesh i'm from america and uh, just a disclaimer here um, i have been gathering lot of things and uh, getting educated myself uh, i'm a parent who has a kid and heading to college next year so uh, i i talk to lot of parents and a uh, lot of college counselors and also a number of videos that i watched uh, till date so whatever i learned uh, till date i wanted to share with everyone and that is the sole purpose of this seminar and uh, but i want you to uh, do the uh, sort of due diligence from your side also before you know you submit any profile okay um some of some of you might have attend my previous seminar called hopsa um so let's talk about uh, financial aid so when we talk about college we have a variety of financial aid available uh, from different uh, parties and uh, the one you see on the right which is a merit aid which is taken care by the colleges uh, and the, the student um, basically our kids you know so the merit is um, available based on their um uh, academic uh, uh, gpa as well as the uh, the test from sat or act and uh, if you see on the left um there are need based aid so which is primarily based on your uh, family income as well as how much it is going to cost the college that you are going to select and uh, based on that they will come to the conclusion whether you need a aid or not you know so last week we talked of talked about the federal aid which is nothing but fafsa and uh, even though they don't call it as a mandatory today 90% of the colleges will look for the fafsa form which you have to apply and uh, go through that whether you're going to get the uh, scholarship or whether you're going to get a federal loan you still have to apply for that and uh, the second one also uh, similar to that which is called state aid so once you fill up the fafsa form there is a additional uh, aid that you can uh, you know try it out from the state level so for that also there is a separate form and the last one you see called institutional aid and that is what we are going to talk about today all right 
So first of all, before uh, we go in deep uh, into the CSS profile or any other uh, financial aid, let's, uh, let's talk about the average tuition fees because the reason we are discussing here is that college fees are so high that uh, every year it is increasing. So this is from the last year uh, average tuition fees uh, coming from the three different areas. You know, one is the public uh, universities, uh, which is for in-state there is a fee, and uh, there is also a separate fee if you are coming from out of state. You know, and uh, there is also a lot of private colleges here, and uh, that fee is almost uh, triple times or four four times bigger than what we pay for the public colleges. Right? So in that case, if we go down to the next one. So let's talk about the sticker price, right? So uh, we often use this term called sticker price, which is nothing but how much the college is going to ask for you when you send your kids to, the, uh, to their colleges. So this is one of the private institute uh, from New York. Uh, I just uh, um, brought their numbers. So basically you will be paying majority of the time the tuition fees, which you see in the right side. And uh, also there is another fees. We don't know what it is. And uh, the next one is a room and board where they, uh, you know, uh, they stay and uh, they, uh, for their food and all. And uh, the next one is the books, uh, uh, supplies, all other things. So overall, you know, if I have to send my kid to that college per year, it is going to cost me $77,763. Right? That is a huge um, amount of money that uh, we got to be prepared ourselves. If we have to send it for the uh, private colleges. Now, um, as I briefly told in the past, the way how most of the financial aid is coming up, like how they decide is, so they pull up the cost of attendance from the college to, that you apply. And um, let's say from the previous slide, that is like 77,000, right? And then they will uh, assess your family contribution in the name of going through your uh, income, how much you are uh, earning from previous last two years, um, they will assess from your uh, tax returns and uh, they will also go through your current income and uh, how many people are um, working in this household. And um, also they will assess your student income in case if they are going for work or if they're even they're working as an intern. And uh, finally, they will assess all sort of uh, assets, what you have, you know, other than your home, uh, where you live. Uh, but in this case, a little bit different that I'm going to cover it in the next uh, slides. And they will also um, assess your kids' assets in case if you are saving 529 or anything in the name of student name, they are going to uh, assess that one also. So basically they will uh, figure it out. Let, let's say the cost of attendance is uh, 77,000, but the family contribution seems like if you have more money than the cost of attendance, then they're going to say that, okay, you don't need a financial aid and you are good to go, right? But if your whole family income and uh, asset is going to be below $77,000, then they will figure it out. And uh, FAFSA will give, uh, you know, FAFSA has a limit of maximum $6,000 to $7,000. And also they will provide some sort of a federal loan. And um, from CSS profile, the colleges will determine how much they can um, provide based on your, um, you know, these 
So this is very important, the cost of attendance and uh, family contribution. Uh, based on that, uh, people will figure it out. Okay, so now let's talk about CSS profile. Um, so this is uh, another way of looking at this uh, financial aid, which is uh, created by the college board. So college board is the organization which has created uh, uh, SAT test and also all sort of AP exams, right? So they are the one uh, created this uh, CSS profile. So CSS is nothing but college scholarship service profile. And uh, uh, so FOPSA is created by a Department of Education, but this one is created by the College Board. All right. So what exactly is a CSS profile? Well, it is a sort of a secret weapon for scoring more college aid. If you have a you know, sort of a low income and you have uh, less assets, all sort of things. Right? So basically it falls under institutional aid. So what that mean, that means is like, uh, you know, um, when FOPSA is actually produced uh, from the federal uh, government. So this one is actually uh, coming from your, the colleges that you apply for it. And the uh, third one is, again, it is not based on merit. So you don't have to worry about how much your kid is um, scored in, uh, uh, in the GPA or SAT or ACT. It is completely based on your family income and the uh, size of the family that you're supporting. Right? So, okay, how do I uh, create these uh, CSS profile is, uh, you can go to the college board and um, I mentioned this, uh, uh, URL. So go to this uh, CSS profile, collegeboard.org. Uh, so once you go there, um, it will ask you to create an account. Uh, either you can create as a student account or parent account. So basically a single account, you can live with that. So for FAPSA, actually, you have to create two accounts. But here, you don't need to. Just one account is enough. And um, and second thing is like this application, actually it's not free, like FAPSA. Uh, this one is like, you need to pay $25 for the first uh, school that you're applying. And then following schools for each school, you are going to pay $16 uh, in order to uh, submit this CSS profile. And uh, they started uh, from October 1st, just like FAPSA form. So they both start in the same day. Um, and uh, you're going to apply this every year. Um, you know, if your kid is going to uh, go for four plus four, eight years, then you, you will have to apply every year. Okay. Um, is it necessary that I need to apply for CSS profile? Well, you will uh, come to know when you go through this college profile, uh, you can see the participating institutions. So there are, um, today there are 400 plus uh, institutions are required for you to submit the CSS profile. And most of them are actually it's a private institutes and a few universities, uh, public universities required to submit for the CSS profile. Uh, again, majority of them, they look for the FOPSA form, uh, but uh, all the elite and the Ivy League colleges, they are looking for the CSS profile. In fact, uh, when you try to submit the your college application through Common App, it will tell you uh, whether they require the CSS file uh, profile or not. But uh, if you can go to this uh, link also and see which are the uh, colleges that are required to apply for it. Okay, so who can qualify to submit this uh, CSS profile? Um, just like uh, FAFSA, uh, this one also very similar. 
uh, the US citizens, the green card holders, and a few other categories that are listed here on the right side. Apart from that, they also admit the international students with, who has the visa, like F1 visa, uh, F2, J1, J2, or G series of visas. Um, if you go to collegeport.com, they have a detailed information about international students and uh, how they can apply for uh, CSS profile scholarship. But again, this is uh, not applicable for H1 or L1 visa holders, um, primarily for the uh, US citizens and green card holders and uh, student visa. Uh, sorry, international student uh, who is coming from India or any other countries. Okay. What kind of information you need to prepare is, uh, again, goes back to very similar to what you prepared for FAFSA. Uh, last two years of your federal tax return, like 1040 form and uh, W-2 forms of your income and your spouse income and the records of any untaxed income from the previous year, you know, any um, uh, IRA or 401k or 529, any sort of thing that you have it. And uh, you, uh, you are checking savings uh, bank statements and uh, mortgage information. And, uh, and you also need um, investment information to uh, keep it handy. You know, all sort of uh, stocks, bonds, trust, everything. You also need to uh, keep your information about your business. Okay, so let's go through what is the uh, main difference of, um, or I would say, um, how much uh, more requirement uh, is required. Say uh, between FAFSA and CSS, FAFSA is actually asking for your income and uh, for your assets. Um, pretty much that's it. Um, and also it will pull up a lot of detail while you, uh, when, when you connect your uh, income session to IRS data retrieval tool. And uh, that makes your life easier. Whereas in CSS profile, actually they're asking you to feed more data. Um, when I say data, they're asking uh, about each and every information about your tax return, especially the 1040 uh, details. I mean, they are giving the reference of what line that you need to look under 1049, under what uh, form, whether it's a K1 or S1, all sort of things, which is good, but they don't have the, uh, the integration of IRS. So you have to manually enter all these details. And then um, you also have to enter uh, both parents' earnings and uh, contribution of all the uh, retirement account or anything that you have um, uh, contributing to your uh, future assets, you know. And um, you also have to enter all the income that you are getting from other sources, right? or any benefits that you are getting uh, from, uh, uh, you know, if your household, anyone is getting benefit from um, state government, then you have to mention that. And um, uh, another thing is on the right side, you can see that. So in this form, they are actually asking for uh, parents housing details also, the place where you live, even that one also you need to mention. And within that, they're asking for monthly, how much you're paying, what is the value of the home purchase now, and um, you know current market value, and how much you owe till now, all sort of details. Right? So whereas FAFSA doesn't ask the information of where you live now. So in terms of assets, um, yeah, primarily the cash, um, savings, checking account, or any CDs that you have, 
um, within the banking uh, area. And also you need to mention about the current market value of all the investments, you know, uh, especially the brokerage account or any uh, investments that you have from variety of sources. And uh, here they're also asking you to uh, mention about any kind of uh, real estate that you have um, other than your uh, main uh, house that you live. Yeah. So in case if you have a farmhouse or any rental properties, any, um, um, you know, any sort of uh, another asset, you need to mention that. And um, also your business, uh, that you are running. So whereas uh, in the FAFSA, actually, if you have uh, less than 50 people, you don't have to mention. Uh, whereas here, you, you have to mention irrespective of any sort of business that you are running. Um, but the good part here is you are able to uh, mention about expenses that are coming from medical or dental which is not covered by the insurance and uh, any repayment of student loan debt uh, for the last two years and uh, any alimony that you are paying due to uh, divorce. So these kind of uh, expenses that you are able to uh, mention it here, whereas in FAFSA, um, they don't care about your expenses. They just care about your income and the assets. And uh, one more uh, uh, very unique one here I see it. Um, this is for the, again, CSS profile, special circumstances. So let's say if you uh, lost a job or something happened or any uh, expenses, um, you know, any uh, family expenses, uh, you know, increased, those kind of thing, you can kind of uh, summarize it and uh, write a letter, sort of an appeal to the uh, CSS profile uh, towards the end. You can explain that, okay, um, these are the situation in my our family. So probably I spent this much money or I lost a job for a couple of months and I didn't have the income and, uh, you know, all sort of things you can summarize it and uh, you can write a small appeal up to 2000 characters here. So that is also very important. Uh, whereas in FAFSA, you don't have a option to appeal anything uh, in the form itself. All right. So the major difference is uh, when it comes to FAFSA, they have the formula. Uh, so last time we talked about EFC, um, you know, the uh, the family contribution, uh, expected family contribution uh, that they drive based on your uh, income as well as the college uh, cost of the colleges, um, the degree. Um, whereas here in CSS profile. Uh, to my knowledge, they are also using that same formula, but they are uh, customized to one and they have some sort of a flexibility there. You know, uh, Basically, they are not saying that we, we are using this formula or that formula. They're just saying that we are internally, we will uh, calculate everything and, uh, you know, we will let you know if there is any um, federal, uh, I'm sorry, financial aid, you need it or not. All right, so major differences um, when it comes to FAFSA that is provided by the, um, uh, I mean, created by US Department of Education for federal loans. And um, this um, CSS profile is created by College Board. And uh, FAFSA is totally free, you don't have to pay. Whereas CSS profile, $25 for the first application and the $16 uh, for the remaining, uh, for each colleges. Uh, main thing is in the financial section here, it is asking for uh, tax income asset, uh, but it doesn't ask your current home value and all. 
whereas in CSS profile, it will ask same information, but then you are asking more information as well as. But the good thing is, it is asking for expenses and uh, special um, um, you know, circumstances. So the methodology is they are purely going with the EFC calculator that uh, I mentioned in the last uh, webinar. So you have the calculator even you, before you're filling up the FAFSA, you can use that calculator to come up with the idea of how much uh, your expected um, family uh, contribution is going to be. And uh, based on that, you can um, you know, figure it out whether you're going to get the scholarship or not. But whereas in college board, they have some sort of a custom uh, calculator. So they're going to, uh, basically you have to wait and uh, they will come back to you whether you're going to get it, or if you're going to get how much you're going to get it. So in terms of flexibility, the uh, FAFSA is very straightforward. Um, whereas in College Board, uh, sorry, CSS profile, they have some sort of a flexibility. You know, they can always go back when you're trying to negotiate. Um, you know, they can always go back and uh, uh, tweak a little bit. Yeah. All right, I think I covered uh, most of the um, uh, CSS profile related information. So now we are going to open this form for all the um, uh, questions that you have. Uh, Chandra, can you unmute everyone? No, sorry, you have to unmute everyone. Now it's a Q and A session. Hey, hi, Mahesh. This is Dinesh. Uh, thanks for this uh, presentation. It's very nice and important. You. Thank uh, you. Just have one question, like uh, about this uh, in FAFSA. There's a financial section, right? Mm -hmm. So where we need to provide the incomes and asset. Yeah. Uh, do we need to? I mean, sir, is there any section there we can provide the mortgage information also, like uh, in CSS profile? In CSS profile, uh, yes, the the information that I showed you here. So these are the five questions they are asking. Yeah, yeah, CSS profile, I know that, but what I'm asking, uh, we don't have such thing like in FAFSA, right? Yeah, FAFSA it doesn't allow you. It, okay. FAFSA doesn't care where you live and how much you paid for it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, top size is a little bit simpler, um, but at the same time, uh, this one gives you uh, option to provide more information. Yeah, so if family contribution, let's say if we go with the EFC calculator, uh -huh. and if the family contribution is coming more than like college fees, uh -huh. uh, that uh, so that means it's guaranteed that we will not get anything right from the from the federal. Yes, uh, but at the same time, you can negotiate with the college counselors. That is what I keep hearing from the uh, lot of parents. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, even for me, also, I'm 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 not going to get uh, anything zero. <laughs> That's what okay. uh, even today uh, my wife was teasing me. Um, but um, you know, that's a reality. We have to go with that and. Um, yeah, I just went to the EFC calculator and I see that it may may yeah. not come. So that's why I was asking, like, uh, yes, yes. Is there yeah. any point then to submit this FAFSA form, or uh, we can get the chance still? No, FAFSA is kind of a mandatory. I mean, even uh, where even you know, almost ninety percent of the colleges they will ask you to fill up FAFSA. Oh, okay. Except that you cannot uh, submit your application. Oh, oh, I didn't. Yeah, know. yeah. Okay. FAFSA is, they don't call it as mandatory, but it is mandatory. Okay. Uh, uh, only CSS profile, it is it, it is a very simple, so, uh, small size of the colleges. 
uh, only 400 colleges that are required CSS profile. And uh, most of them is falls under uh, private Ivy League colleges, elite colleges, sort of thing. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Hello, this is Venkat. Hi, Venkat. Sir, I do have one uh, thing actually. Uh, it took a long time for me to get a green card. So I made certain investment in India, hoping mm -hmm. that uh, under the hope I, I may return back to India. Mm -hmm. Investment means I bought an apartment and all. So those things, I, it's they are extremely difficult to repatriate that money, selling that and getting converting into dollars and all. So yeah. have I to show that asset as well? Because I declared that in my income tax returns. So in this context, mm -hmm. again, I have to declare that I do have an asset in India kind of thing. See, if you already declared the tax uh, in the last year tax, mm -hmm. and uh, here... Um, uh, in the 1040 form, they have a specific line of questions they have. So mm -hmm. if they are you, if they are asking that question, yes, you have to uh, you have to fill it up. I don't remember seeing that uh, questions coming the assets from outside of US. Uh, but then uh, I think 1040 has a different term for each one of them. So you have to go through that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I think you might have submitted the F bar form, right? So. Yes, I did. That, yeah. yeah. So that that represent your uh, that uh, outside of US assets information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you have declared that, then I think it might you might need to declare here also. So that which will eventually affect the <laughs> chance of yeah, getting correct. the. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Right. Thanks. But I can negotiate that uh, it's not easy to repatriate the sell and get the money. In the... Yes, yes. Um, they, a lot of people actually don't know about it, but uh, what I've been talking to many parents, everyone says that, uh, you know, you have to get admission from a couple of universities, colleges, so that you can negotiate saying that, uh, you know, you got, uh, you know, my kid got admission in other, you know, few other colleges. You show the proof, they always come back and uh, give some more uh, money for you, you know, either from merit or from financial aid. Got it, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Magesh. It's, it's very nice uh, to you. consolidate everything together. Thank so, you. yeah, yeah. Another one of the co uh, friends, I think, uh, uh, the parents also mentioned that even uh -huh. the retirement accounts, uh, all the IRA, four hundred one k, and everything, we are uh, putting it in the CSS, right? Or yeah. one of them might be in a Singapore or some other country's uh, retirement uh, system uh, information. Also, they want to put it that money also here. So I think uh, mm -hmm. for that question also, it's yes, right? So um, Yeah, technically, yes. Whatever you yeah. have uh, in your, uh, within your account, you should uh, mention it. So they're not asking each and everything individually. They're asking total of how much you have investment from all the accounts. Yeah. Right? So. Okay. So what uh, uh, what I'm hearing from each most of them is whatever you are mentioning in FAFSA, please make sure you keep the consistent value uh, here also. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that, that makes is very sense, yeah. important because most of the colleges they are going to retrieve it, and uh, if they see discrepancies between these two, you're going to lose a lot of opportunities. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And also, I have one question. Like uh, in that asset, uh, mm -hmm. we we need to declare that uh, stock value, right? Uh, yes. How much uh, we have stock, bonds, or whatever, right? Uh -huh. So that will be so that value will be the current 
the, the value when we submit the application at that time what is their stock value is because no it, it keeps changing right yeah yeah i mean uh, as of today what what is the total value of your brokerage account that that's what they want okay yeah you might be in the uh, profit side or uh, loss side mm -hmm. yeah so one more question this is venkat again yes venkat yeah i do have i worked in multiple companies so those four not one case are being i didn't consolidate only major uh, may on major account i do remember the balance mm -hmm. so at this point of time i have to consolidate them or can i give some indicative figures kind of thing approximate just be very close I, I, exact figure i have to produce yeah yeah I mean, better to consolidate. Uh, they call it rollover, right? Um, yeah. For four on K, you can do rollover with uh, with thing and uh, try to consolidate before you fill up this form. Um, but if it Would is it going be to too take, late, not too late. See these, um, see FAFSA and uh, CSS, they are all expected. Um, you know, based on your college due dates, right? But, oh. but uh, based on your early decision for, let's say you, if you are going to do early decision with one college, but even for one college, they will require FAFSA and uh, some of the colleges, they're going to require CSS file. In that case, you have to submit ASAP. Right? At least number first, let's say, Number first, you're going to apply one college as a early decision. So in that case, you need to have a clear picture of what you're going to do. Okay, right. Yeah. Mahesh, this is Lakshmanan. Hi, Lakshmanan. Hi. Uh, H four students will be considered as international students, or uh, uh, I mean, do they have any concession in CSS, CSS profile? Um, you mean they are living here? Here, here, here in US, right? Hmm. So I did. I I didn't get you. Did can can you hear me? Hello. Okay, I think um, from what I understood is he's asking for H4 uh, visa holder. Can he get a financial aid? Um, that is kind of a gray area. Most of the time what they're saying is if you're coming from India or any other country, uh, consider as an international student, Yes, you can apply for a CSS profile. Uh, but other than that, um, this CSS profile or FAFSA, it is um, the H1 or H4 visa holders is not qualified. Um, but even that also, you have to work with the college counselor and they explain your situation and uh, figure it out how they can help. Yeah. They might have some kind of, uh, you know, insights that they can help with that. Yeah, the federal aid or CSS, mm -hmm. so non-federal aid, both are not, I think, for non-US citizens as per yeah. the definition. Yeah, yeah you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's rejoining. All right. Any other questions? Sorry, Mahesh, I think I dropped off, sorry. Yeah, yeah, so I was uh, responding to that question. Basically, um, this um, federal aid or, or uh, CSS uh, mainly for the green card, I mean, uh, uh, US citizens, uh, green card holders, and uh, international students coming from outside of US. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, not for H1 or H4 people. But what but I was is suggesting it... is um, you can go to 
uh, any college talk to the college counselor they might okay. help you with different uh, avenue okay okay fine but uh, but uh, uh, it is required for us to complete the fafsa as well as css profile before reaching out to them is it not necessarily um that's why before you apply for it you have to call them and okay. uh, tell your situation so they they might say okay you choose non citizen and uh, okay. submit your profile but then it is not still not be qualified as per their statement okay so i guess they they have to take a decision on that okay i want to add to so the social security number the h4 dependent have if the dependent has one then definitely uh, mm-hmm. uh they're saying it's, it's kind of as you mentioned earlier it's a gray area too yeah 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 actually uh, mm-hmm. the social security number is available only for spouse and not for the kids so kids right yeah mm-hmm. right yeah so probably yeah I, we don't we don't have for the kids so again as as uh, magesh sir said we had to reach out to the college only exactly yeah some people saying that even you can print out the uh, the application and uh, without social security number you can fill it out and you can mail it to and then okay. they can then you can reach the college counselor for any international aid or uh, the other uh, uh, other uh, aid possibilities so that's another option too so some uh, forums i will, i mean we were reading it too yeah okay thank you thank you yeah. yeah and also you don't have to wait for these uh, scholarships for anything like that see if you already decided a uh, few colleges you know talk to the counselor and uh, send your kind of a transcript and uh, sat or act score and they will come back for the merit scholarship and uh, they will also guide you for rest of the you know fafs or any other scholarship that you can uh, try it out okay so that is like even before you submit officially they can do all sort of calculation and uh, start working with you okay yeah yep. thank you <clears throat> hey magesh uh, this is bo uh under the tops are css but uh, just uh-huh. a curious question uh, between sat and AC, uh, act right um uh, is it is it um, recommended to submit both um i know i know it depends on the uh, school yeah. one, one over another uh-huh. however if it is pretty close right i mean uh, i'll give some hypothetical so um yeah, yeah so like a you know 1500 and then it's around 32 or 33 if we go for, go with the 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 calculator right the yeah. the normalization calculator maybe it's one is a, is a little bit higher than other yeah yeah so what you can do is uh, they say both are accepted but some colleges prefer act over sat kind of a thing so it's a little confusing so yeah. you just want to get your thoughts yeah so also um, the best way is you talk to your school counselor i see uh, to get the uh, um, get the decision as well as you can talk to one of the college counselor and okay. uh, just like uh, i was telling right in order to get a merit scholarship you can talk to them and say hey uh, i already have all the information can i send it to you can you give me how much i can get for merit so that i i need to plan accordingly mm-hmm. so by looking at it they will tell you uh, going further they will tell you okay uh, between act and act i think your kid has a act better so going further for all the colleges you send act uh, mm-hmm. you don't have to send the other one so they okay. also they also suggest that got it sure yeah. thanks mahesh yeah uh, on that front i have question like do they have uh, some criteria to decide the, the merit bit or is it a purely a based on the college each college is having their own oh, each college filter is, criteria yeah okay yeah. they have their own yeah they are their own right okay. yes yes that's yeah, that's the complexity in us uh, yes. system <laughs> man we cannot know upfront that right no uh, 
See, yeah. you, uh, you can you can know, but then it's not going to be a uh, exact figure. Right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. So basically, the some of the myth is uh, that the most of the colleges prefer over ICT, uh, but it's not the case. The college, I think, uh, uh, I mean, they equally weight both SAT and ACT. Looks like as the standardized so, test. So many, so many myths. Uh, uh, Midwest, yeah, yeah. Midwest, Midwest <laughs> colleges yeah. uh, prefer ACT over. I mean, there's there's a lot going around. So East Coast, East Coast prefers something like that. Yeah, we cannot yeah. decide which one is better. Yeah, yeah, but the but the this time you know uh, most of the colleges are uh, having a SAT is optional. So no, actually, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, I I suggest don't fall for it. Correct. But Correct. what I mean is the see the SAT and um, ACT uh, ACT test record for two uh, record for two of them. One is in order to. Um, See, they have to figure it out who is best out of uh, you know 500 students so for that they will check one of the uh, qualification they're going to look up your um, you know your, your uh, test um, marks the other one is see that is optional but then there are other one is in order to get the scholarship they look for the sat or act that is not optional um they they are not telling upfront but whenever you go to college tour or you just call a college counselor they will tell you that if you it is optional but if you have act submitted there is a good chance that um, there is an additional scholarship um getting an additional scholarship is a great chance for that And when yeah. we know that uh, this, uh, we are getting a scholarship, a merit scholarship from the college after like at the time of the admission or um, once we yeah, decide the time of submission, that is the official one, uh, but you can send it right away right now also. You can call the college and uh, for, get the college counselor email ID, send your transcript and uh, ACT or ACT test uh, score mm -hmm. and uh, ask them to uh, you know just request them to figure it out the merit um, scholarship oh they can tell now also by yeah. sending them oh yes yeah oh. yeah I've, oh. done, okay. I've done a couple of them you mean your oh. question about the scholarship availability you're talking about or no whether i am qualified for a merit scholarship or not yeah, yeah. So they can okay. they can tell you only merit scholarship. They cannot tell you about this uh, any financial aid need based after okay. RCSS profile. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they don't need like for like for now. It's just like uh, we don't have the all uh, transcript, right? Uh, it's just the first quarter maybe. No, so based you, on that. They, yeah, they're not going to look for the twelfth grade. Uh, this one, they're, they're going to look only last three years transcript. Okay. And uh, based on your last uh, test score. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So test score yeah. actually we need to submit that right. We need to provide the test score. Yes. Let's say if I am giving three, uh -huh. then we need to provide that right. Which one to? Um, which one to consider? You, you mean um, uh, SAT and the ACT both? SAT, SAT, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, they will uh, look for it. So definitely you will have to. Yeah, uh, I mean, they will take a best out of it too. Yeah, basically, if you see, if, if even within a ACT, sorry, SAT, you have like a, a reading section, a writing section plus math. Uh, mm -hmm. So best, uh, they can take the, uh, submit the best out of, uh, if you take three times. Math is best on one. The English is on the other one. So, so that is also possible. That's what. Uh, yeah, that is. Uh, they call it a super score, but uh, not every super college is, uh, they do it. Um, okay. Super score is uh, uh, applicable only few colleges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they they don't take like let's say if uh, 
if uh, if i get like in second i get like 1500 and in third i get like let's say 1400 mm-hmm. uh, in the other way so still we they don't go with the third one right they do go with uh, the second one which we submit definitely i am going to submit the second one only because that's the highest yeah yeah, so, that, yes, yeah. yeah. that's that's obvious yeah yeah, yeah. okay because i believe some iv colleges and some they need uh, to submit all the three actually means like whatever you have appeared for how many times you have appeared yeah i mean you, if they are if they have that kind of policy definitely they will ask for that information mhm but from uh, from our side um if you want to uh, get the median number so you can request Uh, them to do the super score uh, which uh, you know they will take uh, best from each section of the test from each uh, each test and then they will take care of it okay yeah yeah any other questions a lot makesh okay great yeah i hope it is uh, it's helpful um so for the next uh, webinar we're going to bring a financial advisor uh, to talk about how to save for college um if you are starting uh, from the beginning or let's say you know he's going to break down and uh, come up with the three strategies uh, with a uh, three level of Uh, being a parent you know, as a new kid or the kid is in uh, elementary or the kid is in middle school you know how we are going to save for college yeah so it's going to be interesting one so keep watching to america and oh that will be nice yeah thank you thank you very much magesh yeah thank you mahesh it's it's very yeah. helpful thanks a lot sure thanks magesh bye thank you bye thank you guys good night yeah good night yeah, all bye. thank you Bye.